At the beginning of the story, it shows the largest illegal goods dealer in Mexico who is dealing with two American men. It turns out that the two American men are undercover DEA members. They have been targeting the dealer for a long time, and now they pretend to buy all the dealer's illegal stuff at a very high price. At the same time, they were suddenly raided by a terrorist group and immediately held the dealer and the two DEA members at gunpoint. Without saying much, the terrorist group immediately killed the dealer and his men, including the two DEA members. Then the terrorists took a suitcase of money belonging to the DEA and also all the illegal stuff belonging to the dealer. But when they want to leave, suddenly, there were two mistresses of the dealer who could escape from the place. Not wanting any eyewitnesses to the recent incident, the terrorist group immediately chased the two women. Fortunately, the two women could hide in the bushes, so the terrorist group didn't find them. The next day, a man named Travis Johansson, who was taking a morning jog on the beach near his house. It turns out that Travis is an ex-military man who is now a police officer with the rank of sergeant. Travis is also known as a brutal police officer because he often uses violent means when arresting his targets. After working out, Travis went straight to the office to do his job. Arriving at the office, Travis is called by Police Chief Hernandez to his room. Here, the police chief showed a video of Travis beating up a Mexican citizen for entering America illegally. The video had gone viral on social media, and now Travis was the talk of the town. The police chief asked Travis not to always use violent when dealing with weak targets or ordinary people. Before Travis could answer, the police chief immediately asked Travis to come with him to a meeting with the mayor in the next room. While walking, the police chief said that two undercover DEA members had been killed by a group of terrorists. The group also killed the dealer and took his money and illegal stuff. The American police were ordered to handle the case and also arrest the terrorist group. The chief of police just got word that the Mexican police station had two female eyewitnesses who were the dealer's mistresses. Apparently, the two women who could escape last night are now at the Mexican police station asking for protection. The police chief assigned Travis to pick up the two female eyewitnesses, as it was only from them that they would get more detailed information. In the end, Travis accepted the chief's assignment, and he would leave for Mexico tomorrow morning. Later that night, Travis goes to a nightclub to have some fun before he heading to Mexico tomorrow. Here, Travis meets his colleague who is also a policeman named Tonelli. Not only Tonelli, there is also an old man named Brinner, who is a close friend of Travis. Apparently, Brinner is Travis's former superior in the police, who is now retired. Then the three of them continue talking chattering while enjoying the music. The next day shows Travis who is on his way to Mexico. Arriving at the border, Travis is approached by a border policeman who will accompany Travis to pick up two female eyewitnesses. After getting acquainted, they both immediately left to the Mexican police station. Arriving there, the border policeman immediately took the two female eyewitnesses to be transferred to Travis' car. After that, they headed back to America. On the way, Travis' car was approached by a Mexican police car. Then the Mexican police asked Travis to pull over and suddenly, they shot the border policeman and one of the eyewitness passengers. As a result of the gunfire, the border policeman and one of female eyewitness were killed. Travis immediately tried to counterattack the Mexican police, and Travis tried to shoot the attackers. In the end, Travis could finish off the two Mexican policemen who attack him. Now all that remains is Travis and his eyewitness named Rosa Barranco. Then Travis uncuffed Rosa, then asked Rosa to treat his stomach, because Travis was hit by a shot. After that, Rosa rushed away to find help, while Travis had to faint because the wound in his stomach was getting worse. When he woke up, Travis was already in one of the houses, and he had also received treatment from a doctor. But Travis' hands had to be handcuffed, and was guarded by a bearded man. Not long after, Rosa came with her brother, who was a member of the Mexican police. It turns out that Travis is now at Rosa's house. Here Travis immediately asked what really happened, and whether the police who attacked him earlier were Rosa's brother, Miguel's gang. 
The brother replied that they were just fake police who intended to thwart Travis from bringing Rosa and her friend to America. They did not want Rosa and her friend to give information about the attack to the two DEA members and the dealer who was told at the beginning. So it is certain that they are the henchmen of the terrorist group that killed the two DEA members and the dealer. The scene moves to an American police station, where are shown Tinelli, Travis' police partner, and Brinner, Travis' former superior. They both go to the chief to ask how Travis is doing, who hasn't returned yet. The chief explains that Travis was attacked by Mexican police officers, but fortunately he could escape with an eyewitness named Rosa. However, as for his current condition and location, the police chief did not know, as he had not heard from Travis yet until now. Here, Tinelli and Brinner ask for permission to look for Travis in Mexico, because they believe that Travis must need help. But the police chief did not give permission, as he had already asked the FBI and local police for help. Plus, Brinner had retired, so he couldn't interfere with police matters anymore. The next day, the scene returns to Travis who is currently being given medicine by Rosa. Here Travis asks, why are his hands handcuffed? Isn't Travis innocent? Rosa replied that her brother didn't believe Travis yet, and considered Travis still a henchman of the terrorist group. This was also reinforced because Rosa saw with her own eyes if the terrorist group was a member of the American police. Hearing this, of course, Travis did not believe it, because all American police have never defected. Here, Rosa explains at the time of the incident, she had heard their conversation saying that the two DEA members who were killed were their former colleagues in the police. Which means, the terrorist group is the American police. Hearing this, Travis borrowed Rosa's cell phone because he was going to call the police chief to tell him all this, but Rosa refused because her brother did not allow Travis to contact anyone. In the afternoon, Rosa came back to Travis and asked if it was true that Travis was not a henchman of the terrorist group. Travis swears that he is a good cop and intends to protect Rosa all the way to America. Instead, if the two of them stayed here, Rosa's family would be threatened because sooner or later, the terrorist group would discover Rosa's location. That's why Travis Want borrowed Rose's cell phone, because he was going to contact the American police chief for help. Hearing this, Rosa finally agreed to lend her cell phone to Travis. Travis quickly contacted the police chief, who was near Tinelli. Travis immediately told his location and asked the police chief to quickly send backup squad to help and pick him up. Travis also told him that the terrorist group was a member of the American police, so they had to find out who was behind it. Not long after that, Rosa asked her brother for permission if she and Travis had to back to America in order to expose the terrorist group. Plus, Rosa will also only endanger her family if she still lives in this house. But the brother did not give permission because he didn't trust Travis, and also Rosa would be safe living here while there was still her brother. At the same time, suddenly there were several cars coming, so Rosa's brother immediately ordered his men to be ready. Apparently, they were a mafia group who intended to arrest Rosa and Travis. The head of the mafia asked Miguel, the Rosa's brother, to just hand over Rosa and Travis so that there would be no bloodshed. But obviously, the brother refused, so there was a shootout between Rosa's brother and the mafia group. In the middle of the battle, Travis kept shouting to open his handcuffs because he would help finish off the Mafia group. Rosa's brother, who was overwhelmed, finally ordered the Beard, his man, to open Travis' handcuffs. But when the Beard one opened the handcuffs, he had to be shot by one of the Mafia members from behind. Quickly, Travis immediately took the handcuff key from the Beard's body, and he immediately helped Rosa's brother finish off the mobsters. In the end, Travis and Rosa's brother could flatten them all. After that, fortunately Rosa's mother still survived, and the only victim was the Beard, Rosa's brother's men. Here, only then did the brother believe in Travis, and he also allowed Rosa to go to America with Travis. But the brother asked that they always be careful, because the terrorist group would definitely use all means to eliminate Travis and Rosa. Before leaving, the mother gave money to Rosa, because she knew that Rosa had no money for the trip. The mother also gave Travis a lucky necklace, so that later Travis could bring Rosa safely, along with solving this case.
On the way, Travis decided to go first to a paid phone, which was to contact the police chief. That's because to get to America safely, Travis needed the chief's help. But Rosa got angry and said that if every time Travis contacted the police chief, there would be people who suddenly came to attack them. Which means, indirectly, Rosa suspects that the police chief is the mastermind behind the terrorist group. Hearing this, Travis promised not to contact the police chief, but would contact his old friend Brenner, the former superior. In the end, Rosa allowed Travis, but it should be later when they would reach the border. Then, Travis immediately continued his journey to the border. When it was close to the border, Travis decided to rest first at the hotel, because it was getting late. Then, Travis immediately contacted Brenner, his best friend, using Rosa's cell phone. Here, Travis asked Brenner for help to pick him up tomorrow morning, because he was sure that at the border, there were already a lot of mafia ordered by the terrorist group. With pleasure, Brenner was willing to help Travis, so Travis immediately sent his current location to Brenner. After that, Rosa and Travis were seen having dinner because they hadn't eaten yet since morning. Here Rosa tells why she can be the mistress of the illegal stuff dealer. It turned out that it was just a pretense, because Rosa was actually ordered by her brother, who was a Mexican police officer, to find information related to the dealer. But unexpectedly, they were suddenly attacked by the terrorist group, which made everything as messy as it is now. Travis also believed what Rosa said, because he was sure that Rosa was a good woman. Then Rosa asked was Travis already married or had children. Travis replied that he had been married twice and divorced twice. During his marriage, Travis has not had time to have children, because maybe he was too busy with work. After that, they both decided to rest, as they had to get up early tomorrow. In the morning, Travis woke up to the sound of knocking on the door. When he opened it, it turned out to be Tinelli, Travis's police partner. Tinelli explained that he came with Brenner to pick up Travis. Brenner was waiting in the car, so Tinelli asked Travis and Rosa to get ready, because now they had to leave immediately. In the end, Travis and Rosa immediately went to Brenner's car, while Tinelli and one of his men used the other car. On the way, Travis asked Brenner and his driver if they would be safe. The driver asked Travis to take it easy, because they would always protect Travis. Not long after, Rosa asked about what activities Brenner had been doing since retiring from the police. Brenner replied that his days were always boring, because he really missed his youth and prime time. At the same time, Rosa accidentally saw the bracelet worn by Brenner, so she immediately realized that the bracelet was exactly the same as the bracelet worn by the terrorist group. Rosa quickly whispered to Travis and told him everything. Then Travis asked Brenner's driver to stop the car, because Travis and Brenner had to get off first to chat for a while. Here Travis immediately asked if it was true that the terrorist group was Brenner and his troops. At first, Brenner pretended not to understand what Travis was saying. Then came Tinelli and Brenner's driver, who asked why they were down in a hot place like this. Travis immediately asked Tinelli to tell the truth, because Travis already knew everything. Suddenly, Brenner and the driver held Travis at gunpoint, then said that what Travis had all said was true. Here, Tinelli asks Brenner not to shoot Travis, because Travis can work with them. Then Brenner explained that he and the troops had only intended to steal illegal stuff, then finish off the dealer. But unfortunately, there were two DEA members who were undercover, so they had to kill the two DEA members. Plus, they had to leave behind two female witnesses, namely Rosa and her friend, who was pretending to be the dealer's mistress. Brenner promised that he would not finish Travis, as long as Travis would cooperate with them, and then finishing off Rosa. Soon Rosa was taken out, because they had to finish her before getting to America. Here, Tinelli apologizes to Travis, then says that after this, everything will be fine. But when Rosa want to be finished off, Travis asks them to find another solution, other than killing Rosa. Hearing this, Brenner became upset, so he intended to finish Travis too, because he could not cooperate. Tinelli tries to dissuade Brenner, because if they finish Travis, then the matter will be even more complicated. But suddenly, Travis attacked his former partner, and there was a shootout between them. After that, Travis was attacked by one of Tinelli's men who was guarding the car. 
but of course Travis easily could finish him off. In the end, Travis could take him down them all. Then Travis and Rosa immediately left to America, because now they could leave safely. One week later, it shows Travis talking with the police chief. Here, the chief thanks Travis, because Travis not only brings eyewitnesses, but also clears this case to its roots. The police chief also promised that after this Travis position would be appointed and get promotion. Shortly after that, Rosa was seen who had just finished giving her testimony on all the information she knew. Then Rosa approached Travis, then thanked him for saving her. With Travis's success in carrying out his mission, the movie ended.